Um, Heidi asked, my question to you is, do you plan your painting before you start? So with the intuitive process, not, not much at all. I don't plan it much at all. And um, hi, Jenny. Yay. So yeah, plan your painting before you start. Now, there are a few ways that I go about a painting and it does depend on obviously what kind of painting I'm doing. For instance, if I'm painting a landscape painting, then that's definitely one that I plan before I start to a degree because the intuitive part of me will always be really strong in what I do. And that just means that whatever I'm working on, I'm almost ready to release to, to any kind of transition at any point so if something comes up and it looks you know it's presenting a different pathway that I could go down but I'm going to have to sacrifice this whole thing in order to follow that path then most of the time I will do it and I'm ready to do it and so I've had landscape paintings uh, present themselves out of abstracts for instance and the other way around landscape paintings that turn abstract and I just roll with it you know so that's just something that you get better at with the amount that you do. And I keep coming back to quantity and I'll keep singing about quantity because it really all is about quantity and what you experience in that quantity that can then develop your, your aesthetic authority, if that makes sense. That is how you're going to find your style and there's nothing else for it. It's just going to take time and quantity. So yeah, plan your painting before you start. So in, in the intuitive approach, I, I may have a rough color combination in mind and, and there might be something that I'm excited to try out with different um, mediums or some, you know, I might have an idea in my head of something to try out, but most of the time I just jump straight in. Hi Lisa, welcome. Yeah, I just jump straight in and um, I, I actually prefer that that wildly exciting opportunity of of just you know just going blindly just by feeling just tip this on tip that on see what happens see how they affect each other and and what comes of it and, and it's almost like I'm having a really um not loaded conversation with the painting so I'll be saying something to start by tipping two things on and then what that does you know it'll sort of arrange itself however according to whatever physics is happening and that's like it responding to me and saying something back which is fresh and surprising to me you know like like in a conversation and so then I'll have something to say back to that and we just keep going back and forth talking to each other um, in this very beautiful wandering kind of a way do you know conversations like that that you have with people where it's not loaded it's completely open-ended so free so supportive you know where you just are what you are and you're just talking and this is how you know this is just what's happening so that that's what that's what you can have with your art has anyone ever felt like that before with with their intuitive art I'd love to hear about it um, and I think there are so many similarities between what we do in our life and what we do in our art. And that's the power of this. That's how um, what, what you cultivate in your art can be so powerful for enriching your life, your life experience. And, and it all depends on having eyes to see it, you know, an ability to actually take on this information and do something with it. Like recognize it as seeds and plant the seeds and water the seeds, you know? So, um, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm all about here. So Kylie says, uh, Kylie asked about alcohol inks and UPO. That's a whole separate course that I'm going to finish filming over the next couple of weeks. So that one will be out soon. That's the inky, inky art course. And I know that one's been a long time coming. And to be honest, I'll just say this much. <laughs> I got so tangled up in, in developing that one that I really had to put this one out first so I could get my head around how to actually, you know, make it work <laughs> in an effective way. So that one is, is definitely coming. So, and then we've got Blissful Art and Kart Zams who have shared on their Instagram stories. 
and I just love seeing those. It feels, like I said in the actual course, it feels like like I'm painting something, you know, because um, I'm, I'm offering my, my energy and my, my ideas, you know, and, and seeing what comes of that, almost like, you know, in a, in a regular painting, if you're offering colors and media and whatever and see what comes of that, this is really the same thing. Me, you know, teaching you is, is a similar thing. And, and that's why we've gone right to the basic foundations of media and all the, you know, everything, because I want to, I want to build it really strong from the ground up. And, and you might feel like, I don't know, why, why is she telling me the, you know, um, the definition of paint, you know, but it's because when I realized I was, I've been an artist for ages when I actually realized why, what made oil paint different to other paints was just that binder um, pigment blend and that all the paints have pigment, but it's just a different binder that actually set me free in a lot of ways because then I thought about things differently. I thought about, oh, so I can um, order in all these pigments now and play, you know, so it actually opens up a lot more possibility. That's why I've, I've come about it that way. <sighs> Lisa. Um, Lisa says, which I've just learning how to let go of expectations, yeah, which I've never experienced and I'll say it is amazing from an artist's heart is different. So thank you. Yes. Yes. But this is, this is real. You know, this is what freedom is made of. And, and if we aren't releasing ourselves and our art from expectation, then we're probably living our life in that way too. We've got expectations that are setting us up for disappointment, setting us up to be controlling of other people and, and nothing creative, you know, comes from that. And, and relationships are the most creative thing there is. So when, when you get these foundations in your art, you will see it play out in your relationships and, and there'll be a greater freedom, a greater intimacy. You'll see the way that you can affect people if you're a mother or a parent, um, the way that you can affect your children. You know, this is powerful. It's, yeah. So you can see this course is the beginning of something enormous for me because I've been, you know, really testing this stuff and living it and jumping on it and smashing it against things and really testing it for solidarity and, and for truth, you know? So hi, Casey, welcome. So yes, I, I want to really um, thank people who have been brave to share their work so far. Nobody is judgmental here, least of all me. I just love to see your stuff coming out in process. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're too much of a beginner or I don't know if you feel like you might not have done it right or I don't know, whatever might be restricting you from sharing. I just want you to know that we get a little electrical charge when we see your space and see the different things that you've been putting together and how you've tackled it. That is inspiring to us, you know? It doesn't matter about the level of proficiency or whatever. I've, I've invited people right from, you know, beginning artist level. So, yeah, just just share away, please. I love it. And as you can see, I'm, I'm collecting all those in a highlight um, in Artflow sessions. Yeah, Lisa says, I love seeing anyone's work. It's all fun. It really is. And this is just the beginning. I'm telling you, like this course is setting up for a long journey and I would love so much if, if you've got that stamina building for the long haul, I want to know about that too. Do you feel that? Because this, this isn't just like, yeah, just do this course and pick up these skills and then move on. I hope you're getting a sense of that. I, I want to start something a lot more profoundly enriching um, for the long haul for you because that is what's available and I would be shortchanging you if I didn't if I knew all this stuff and didn't actually offer you you know the directive of, of how to how to get this this treasure for yourself maybe I can get Indy to have a nap today yes oh who knows <laughs> um maybe just don't say it out loud Megan <laughs> Lisa says I'm loving seeing the different mediums and paints mixing yeah, totally. And um, I think that's the thing too, because when we think in categories, 
you know how school I, I think at school it's probably society as well gets us thinking in boxes and categories and then it's all about oh you've got to try and not think in boxes think outside of the box but hang on you've set up our whole system of thinking to be in boxes and categories so when we approach art we kind of box ourselves there and we say well I'm a fluid artist you know and, and we don't actually think outside of the box to to take on anything different and and who wants to just live in one little spot for their whole life so this is an invitation to be an aesthetic tent dweller an aesthetic nomad <laughs> you don't have to stay there you don't have to say you're anything you know you're creative you can say I'm working on this currently but who knows what I'll be doing a year from now you know that's entirely up to you and it's actually your calling being a creative to um to keep developing you know to keep enriching and growing and and keep an eye out for clues and and to not know just like one single painting how you might not know how it's going to end up at the end but you have this sense of skills building in order to meet each step one at a time so um the same is is in your life the same is in your your art making whether it's a career or just a side hobby this this is the same thing Oh, we're so excited to have you, Casey. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really I really am. I keep saying this, but I really am honored to have you along for this journey. It's it's like I said, it's the start of something enormous. And um yeah, just this process of figuring out what the basics are for me to lay the foundations and all that kind of thing. It just cements it in me as well. So um, don't be afraid to teach people because you'll actually be be uh, edifying yourself of of your expertise as it builds, you know. Aesthetic nomad. Yes, <laughs> I think we should start a hashtag there, do you reckon? Aesthetic nomad. <laughs> because too many artists are boxed. Too many artists are boxed. And, and it's because of the pressure to sell. It's, the, it's because of a, a pressure to appear in a career as a master of one thing, you know, and, and what would come, what would come for us if, if we didn't think in boxes like that, we'd see extraordinary things. That's what I want for you. I want extraordinary things. And, and, you know, like it seems sensible if you want a career as an artist to follow the advice and hash out, you know, that one thing that you can be famous for and just keep going on and on with it. But I, I, you can test me on this. Sorry if it takes your whole life and it turns out wrong. <laughs> test me on this. That if you develop that, um, that authority to be an aesthetic nomad, that all those things will come to you on the side because you will be so strong and so confident and so unstoppable. People will notice something different about you. They will say, whew, that girl was doing that over there and now she's doing this. Like, how can she break the rules? <laughs> you know, what does she have that I don't have? That speaks volumes, you know, it stands out, stands out. So, so don't you ever box yourself in a medium. Please do not do that. And if you've got that on your Instagram, like I'm um, and, you know, even just saying abstract artist, like you'll see me use those hashtags. I'm just using the hashtags. <laughs> I don't, I don't call myself anything. I call myself well, now I'll call myself the aesthetic nomad. <laughs> but do you see what I mean? Do you see the, the power of it? Because you could be shutting yourself off from, from something that sets your heart on fire, you know, and speaks beauty and, and hope into someone else who sees it and, and maybe buys that piece and has it in their home and it just charges their home with positivity. You wouldn't want to deny that person that, would you? Don't be so mean. So don't box yourself <laughs> Um, yeah, the hashtag, you're a creator. Yes. Yes, Lisa. Dougie the digger. Oh, what happened to Dougie the digger? <laughs> That's true. Do you know what? I was thinking um, with my blog posts. Yeah, anyone who hasn't read my blog posts, you can go back and there's a few of them that talk about, you know, the mindset stuff. So that's probably a good thing to go back and, you know, keep up with the, with the eagle thinking. Because, you know, this mindset stuff, it, it really speaks to you the truth about your purpose as an eagle 
and not a chicken. You know, the artists that box themselves, they're really keeping themselves in chicken thinking, scratching around on the ground and not soaring the heights. When you're a no, uh, an aesthetic nomad, then you are powerful to soar the heights and to think like an eagle. You know, nothing will be impossible to you. You'll just, you know, you, you'll, you'll think up whatever and then you just go get it, you know. <laughs> and how much more freedom is there being an eagle than a chicken, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, just reminding yourself of, of the truth when you feel like you're getting into a bit of a funk. Going back to, um, you know, whatever is setting your mind on the right track for eagle thinking and, and like, it, sometimes it just takes one phrase and you just go, oh, my gosh, I've been thinking like a chicken again. You know, I've got to go back to the, to the eagle. Um, so, yeah, my point was I've got blog posts where it talks about the stuff so you can go back and read on there. But, I, I, you know, I'm really gearing up for a podcast. As soon as I've got things under control, I'll... Um, I release a podcast and then I think the hashtags and, and Dougie the Digger and everything is just going to be, you know, <laughs> just blow. Um, but until then, yeah, Megan found a hashtag, Dougie the Digger. We called him Dougie. But if you look um, in the GIFs under digging, you'll see this this very buff man with no shirt on who's just digging, you know, for all his worth <laughs> with so much enthusiasm. Um, that's, that's what we want because this, this testing and, um, applying yourself to focus in, in the intuitive approach that you're digging, you're digging in the foundations and, and you're testing. What am I made of? What is my art made of? What is my aesthetic made of? Because your style is there. It's not something, it's not something that you have to put together. You know, it's, it's already there. You just have to dig for it. You have to dig for it and, and you've just got to keep your eyes open and, and yourself um, watching out for clues that speak to you in a way that, that you feel, you know, you feel that fire. You know, you know if it's for you or not. You know, everyone's got taste. So you just start with that and your taste might develop over time. It probably will. It will refine and become more sophisticated. But, but the taste that you have right now is enough. And again, it's like seed form. Your, your taste and your aesthetic is in seed form, like the acorn, right? You just, you just got to attend to it and, and validate it with care. You validate it with care and it will just, it will grow and take care of itself. Oh, nice way to have my dinner. Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah, so this is dinner for your mind and then you got dinner for your body. That's great. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you for joining. And we'll do this every week at the same time. I'll send an email out about that. So um, if you have any more questions after the next module unlocks or in between time or whatever, just come and ask it on the Facebook group or you can email it to me at ange at angemillart.com. And, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for hanging out. And enjoy the rest of your day, night, wherever you are. Love to you guys. I'm signing off. Bye.